Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 199.5 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. And let me just start this one off with an apology, okay? Look, I was doing so well. I had my fucking... Bro, I did the podcast four weeks in a row. Maybe even five weeks. I can't even remember. So well, so consistent. Early on Patreon, I was nailing that shit. Uh, but then uh, I stopped nailing it because the fucking uh, Luke and Lewis podcast came in here. We had to set up all that. The live stream, the 24-hour live stream absolutely fucked me. I missed one week and then I was like, that's all right. I'll just miss one week and I'll do the next one. And then all this Black Lives Matter shit to happen and to be honest i i just felt too fucking sad to do the podcast but that's not your problem that is my fault and i apologize and to keep me accountable in the future i need your help right and, and i've devised a system that that i think is going to work really well from now on this is how I start the podcast. I have it here with me a whiteboard because a whiteboard it's not permanent is it you know if i painted this shit I'd forget about it. If I painted a big sign that said, do it every Sunday, that wouldn't work. I mean, it's in the fucking title, Spearhead Sundays. I mean, you know, it doesn't say Spearhead every Sunday, does it? It's just Sundays. This is coming out on a Sunday. So, you know, you have nothing to complain about. And you know what? You don't deserve it every week. Okay, I'm sorry. I tried taking it out on you. It made me feel bad. It's my fault. I apologize. And you know what? I deserve to be canceled. I've got, I've, I'm going to get to my solution, but for now, I deserve to be cancelled. Lewis Spears is over party. Get it trending on Twitter, right? I'm over. I've been cancelled. I've The mob is outraged. And if there's one thing I know that every comedian should be doing, it is whenever they get an outraged group of people, an outraged mob, they must apologise to that mob. And, and, and then, right... So let's say you're a comedian and you've done something to offend your audience. Me, I'm a stand-up comedian and I've offended my audience by, by missing two weeks of the podcast, okay? So what needs to happen is I need to be cancelled and you need to be outraged. So I'm cancelled and you're the mob. Now, the best thing that a comedian can do in, a, in this situation when they are cancelled by the mob is what they should do when they're cancelled by the mob for offending them, for doing anything, no matter how valid that mob's offense is if there's enough people in the mob they are correct for whatever reason if it's a joke that everyone else enjoyed in the room and then someone on twitter heard it and got angry about it doesn't matter if the joke was funny if the mob is angry the mob is right and the comedian is cancelled and wrong if there's a rape allegation especially if it's false that comedian is cancelled but only if the mob's outraged you know if there's like a if, if, if there's like a, a female rape accusation, generally we don't care about that. That doesn't matter. It's hashtag me too, female, not hashtag him too. You know what I mean? We got priorities here. We're only fixing one thing at a time, okay? Uh, it, 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 you know, what I'm saying is the mob is always right. And if a comedian has been cancelled, what they must do is always apologise, no matter how silly the outrage may seem. Because if there's enough people angry, that means they're correct and the comedian is wrong. Now, you might be thinking, oh, if I'm a member of an outraged mob, and the person I'm angry at apologizes for the silly thing they did, what should I do as a member of the outrage mob? I'm going to tell you. If you're a part of an outrage mob, here's what happens when the person you're angry at decides to learn from that moment, become a better person, apologize, and do better in future. What you need to do is never accept that apology, ever. In fact, them apologizing makes it worse, obviously, because not only have, have, have you been given the power to make someone famous apologize to you, you have so much power. You, the average Joe, can make the, the giant Jimmy Kimmel apologize to you. What you need to do when he's on his knees begging for your forgiveness is you get out your axe and execute him. That's what you do. He's surrendering and you commit a war crime. That's how it works. If you're part of the angry mob, no mercy. No mercy for the apologizing. 
Because the minute they apologise, that's when they're at their weakest and that's when you, the angry mob, must strike to kill. Finish them off. Never accept an apology. And that's what's going to happen here. I'm, I, right now, as Lewis Spears, sincerely apologise to the mob. Please, please forgive me for missing two weeks of the Spearhead Sunday's podcast. I, I, I need your forgiveness or I cannot move on. Or my, if, I, if you don't forgive me, my bosses will fire me because their bosses, the advertisers, will pull their advertisements from the show. So please forgive me. And then you guys just don't and fucking ruin my career and then nothing changes. In fact, it makes me even worse because now I have nothing to gain from learning and from improving myself. And now I'm bitter and angry at you, the person who could have taught me, but instead you decided to kill me and now I go down even further down my dark path of of missing episodes and that's what needs to happen so guys what i have is i have a solution here it's not well it's not a solution but it, I'm, I'm trying okay i'm trying all right i'm trying my best you try doing a fucking 24 hour live stream and then finding anything to talk about and then the next week the the biggest most sad fucking public execution happens and the whole world's angry and you try and muster up the courage to be like yeah so anyway i called uh, the bank and they were rude to me so here's 20 minutes of that because that's my biggest problem that's what this podcast is me yelling about customer service cunts like it's the worst thing that's ever happened meanwhile cunts are getting executed in the street let's try uh doing that Dude, however bad I must feel, let's all send some thoughts and prayers to Luke Kidgel. It's not a good time, right, to have a podcast called Memoirs of a White Guy, is it? <laughs> Luke Kidgel is fucked. He could get cancelled just for posting the link. It's really not a good climate to be branding yourself as the whitest boy who ever lived, is it? It's really not good. Not goddamn. However bad I feel about trying to tell you cunts my problems, at least my podcast isn't called Memoirs of a White Guy. Dear Lord, when, when we were talking about that title years ago, I never thought it would come to bite him in the ass, but here we are. Black Lives Matter. I mean, let's, that's the Memoirs of a White Guy is the All Lives Matter of podcast titles, you know? Like, all this shit's happening, and then bloody poor Luke Kidgel has to post his podcast and go, guys, come listen to Memoirs of a White Guy. I would see that as a Black Panther and be like, put him to the top of the list. He needs to fucking go. So thoughts and prayers to Luke Kidgel, my brother. Uh, send him some love uh, because Lord knows he needs it. He's running the risk of being cancelled just for promoting, promoting his own fucking podcast. Poor cunt. Anyway, my solution, right, to this... Uh, to this uh, a common theme of Spearhead Sundays being missed, uh, and I'm going to get to why I've delayed episode 200 as well, uh, but it's for obvious reasons uh, in a minute. Uh, my solution to this is uh, is is uh, a Simpsons-esque theme, right? You know how they... Or, or it's like a cartoon thing. What I have is I've got, a, I've got a whiteboard, and it says on the whiteboard, weeks since missed episode. Now, this previously was just for me just to motivate me this wasn't for you i didn't tell you cunts about this. this this was only for me to try and like motivate myself if i woke up every day and i looked at this and i was like man i want to see 52 on this fucking board i thought that would work but clearly it has not so now i'm making it public every episode i'm going to start it off with updating the whiteboard and now the first update i'm going to make is i'm going to rub out this four okay I'm going to rub out that four because we're no longer there. I was in four and that was a, that was pretty good. That was a whole month. I think it might even have been five. But whatever it was, it was fucking good and it was going well. And now what I'm going to do with my red whiteboard marker is I'm going to draw in a big fat fucking zero. Because that's what's happening here. A big fat fucking zero has happened. And it needs to be fixed, okay? Now, what I'm going to try and do, we're going to start small. Let's try and get up to four first, and then we'll reevaluate. You know what? How about if I can get past four, we can move on from red? Does that sound good? And you guys can follow on at home, you know? Like, maybe you could have your own whiteboard. <laughs> this is good. You have your own whiteboard or your own note in your phone, and just write down uh, weeks since missed episode. 
and you can keep track of how many fucking episodes of Spearhead Sundays you've listened to. We can do this shit together. If you miss an episode, you got to start again. And I want, I want you to be honest. That's what I want to see in my fucking Instagram DMs. I want to see you cunts making these and tagging me in it for your Instagram story. I want to see everyone make their own whiteboard, their own fucking paper thing, their own phone night. And I want to send that shit to me. We'll put it up on the Speared Sunday's Instagram uh, story. And uh, we'll all do this together, all right? So everyone, weeks since missed episode, we're back down to zero. Let's see if we can get to four together, okay? And if you miss an episode, fuck it, I'm not doing one. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, it's just um, the 24-hour live stream was like, not really an excuse. I should have pre-recorded this, but I just didn't. Uh, and uh, but but then all that Black Lives Matter shit fucking happened, which I'll I'll get into. But I don't I don't want it to be like a big bummer because I have I had some. I've got some fucking funny for you. That's my job. I'm trying to bring like some darkness into this. Some I'm trying to bring some lightness into the dark because the last thing we more fucking need is is more more darkness. And I bet that that must be what some uh, police commissioners are saying right now. Last thing we need is but more darkies. Huh? <laughs> Um, so, yeah, what, how has your week been? Have you been fucking staring at the news going, Oh my God, I can't fix it! And feeling terrible, ruining your own week, ruining your own day every morning just by opening the fucking news. It's horrific, isn't it? Anyway, but I, that's, I'm trying to not do that. So, um, man, I've had such, I have had such a busy two weeks. It's the reason mainly is we've been setting up Luke and Lewis in the, in the studio. So I, I, I just set up all of my own personal shit and I'm like, great. Now I'm ready. We can bring the boys in and my shit will keep rolling. No, nah! uh, but that's fine. Now Luke and Lewis is all rolling and Keelan and I are in our workflow again. We had such a good fucking, uh, planning meeting, man. We're gonna we're gonna take over this year. Uh, uh, even though I haven't been like uploading as frequently, I've been, I've been keeping pretty well. Um, but I obviously haven't been doing that two a week that Keelan and I were, were really smashing out uh, last year. But now we had such a fucking productive meeting uh, in the studio today of like our goals for this month and our goals for 2020 and all of the content we want to shoot. We've started like working ahead of schedule finally again. Like, for example, I'm recording this on Wednesday. So Patreon supporters are going to get that shit Thursday. So it's all like really happening super far ahead of schedule. And if you want to get everything early, Patreon's... The how are you going to do that? So that's really, really cool that we're working towards that. And I'm, I'm very excited for it. It's very good. Um, and uh, yeah, man, if you want to keep in the loop about all that stuff, what we're working on and, and help help the movement, uh, support Spearhead Sundays uh, and everything else I do on Patreon. You get early access to everything and the Discord is banger as always. So uh, that's really cool, man. We've got some big plans. I've got some big goals because, uh, yeah, even with the, the uploads not being as frequent as I would like at the moment, I think that'll be fixed from next week. Uh, man, the channel's exploding. 17,000 subscribers this month. That's fucking so cool. We're, get, we're actually going to hit half a million. Like, maybe in two months. That's what we wrote down on the board. I want to see 500k by the end of the, end of the 60 days. So I, that's, that is like a big number, huh? That's like big YouTuber stats. I, I still don't... I don't know, it's weird. I still don't think of myself as a big YouTuber, but I, I think I'm like there. You know, it's very, very fucking cool. And I'm very grateful to all of you guys, all you like soldiers out on the front lines, like sharing shit and supporting that real comedy that we're trying to make and trying to put out. And it's amazing to see it grow and blossom and, and spread throughout the world now. You know, it's like 30% uh, of my viewers now are from America. 15% uh, are from the UK. It's really, really growing and it's spreading worldwide. And I cannot wait for this Corona shit to be over so I can finally fucking see you guys in real life, I'm dying to uh, to get back to stand-up. But for now, we're smashing out that shit. So what I was thinking is uh, what I'm going to be doing from now on uh, is also the... the So episode 200. So this is obviously 199.5. I didn't feel right coming back with 200. And I've had to adjust my plan. So I can't... I've worked out that I cannot actually stream episode 200 to the main channel because streaming from this good camera that you're watching the podcast on... Uh, my internet cannot handle it, uh, as we learned. So the, the Luke and Lewis 24-hour stream was amazing, but we had 
eight hours of bad internet, the stream buffering going down, all that kind of bullshit because we just d don't have the capabilities. We had to get a Patreon supporter, Whitey, bless his fucking soul. He does streaming for a living. He came in at like two in the morning, I think, brought his own computer, brought all these ethernet cables and gear and all this kind of shit and all these programs that he knows how to use, which we did not, and saved the day. And that was the only reason we were able to continue the 24-hour stream. So I've worked out that, that, that streaming the podcast to my main channel is just not feasible at this point. So what I'm going to do instead for episode 200 is I'm just going to record a really good episode. I've saved up some fucking horrific miscellaneous bit at the end uh questions and uh, i'm gonna do it like a like a long celebratory episode 200 and put that on my main channel so if you want to see that early patreon's the way to do it that'll be coming out next week for sure uh because the whiteboard is going to motivate me to not miss any more episodes right so uh what uh, what I'm going to do with the live streaming is I'm trying to incorporate all that live stream shit into what I'm doing. So what I'll be doing from now is uh, at the start of every podcast, when I start recording it, I'm actually going to live stream it from my phone, which I know I can do. I've done lots of tests. I'm going to be live streaming it from my phone uh, exclusively to Patreon supporters. So uh, the, on, on our schedule, we've uh, worked out we're going to be recording the Speared Sunnies podcast like Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Australian time time uh is when we're going to be doing it i mean that that'll vary from because of my availability but for now that's what we're going with so if you want to catch the podcast fucking live as i do it uh patreon's the way to do it so uh, I'll, I'll put more uh info in the discord and all that kind of shit but uh yeah now uh it's time to get down to something very important right much more important than any, anything else that's been happening in the news and guys uh it's time to fucking get a grip and stop okay this is this is me lewis spears telling you the loyal listener to stop okay i'm putting my foot down i almost said i'm gonna i'm putting my foot in the sand no i'm drawing a line in the sand and i'm also putting my foot down i'm not drawing a foot in the sand and then putting my line down i'm not i'm not doing a line <laughs> off my foot no I'm putting my foot down. I'm drawing a line in the, sta in the sand. I'm saying it here now. Stop making S Lewis Spears Stan accounts. I am saying it right now. No more Stan accounts. Hashtag say no to standing Spears. I don't want to see none of that shit on my Twitter. Okay? I don't know where it came from. Somebody edited a fucking image of me with my nails painted and the anime eyes and a bow and the sparkles and I look very kawaii, ooh-woo, and I'm here to say, stop it. There is none of that. I don't want any, I don't want any stands. I don't want any Spears stands. I don't want, I don't want you guys to come up with a name for my audience that you call each other. No little, ga no Lady Gaga's little monsters. None of that directioners, none of that believers, all right? I am saying no to stands because I've noticed a little uprising, a little movement within my fan base, and I don't like it, okay? Where all of these people are starting to think that it's funny to start make, making gifts of me and responding to my tweets with gifts and creating fan accounts and making fan edits. I watched just yesterday, someone made a minute long Twitter video of me looking handsome. And, and let, let me tell you, I'm doing a line off my foot in the sand. That stops today. Say no to standing spears. That's an epidemic that I, that I see getting out of hand very quickly. It's time to implement some social distancing. And by that, I mean, it's time to implement some social ostracizing. If you have a Spears Stan account, I want you to look yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror and think about what you've done. Because what you have done is not very oo-woo at all. And I don't even know what the fuck that oo-woo shit means. Is that just a, is that just a noise? Oo-woo? Or does it actually mean something like kawaii? I know what kawaii means. That's like cute. 
But what does uwu mean? Uwu. It sounds like an old man getting punched in the gut. Uwu. <laughs> it really does. Like if you hit a 75-year-old man in the gut. Uwu. I don't like that. And I'm putting my foot in the line of the sand down. Say no to standing spears. Final warning. Right? Now. What else did I want to talk about here? Oh, bro. This corona shit, it's, it's, it's gotten out of hand. Okay? I, 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 uh, you know what I'm doing with these restrictions lifting? I don't know what it's like in your country, but Australia, I think we got really lucky with this shit. Um, but we're starting to open up again. And I'm still, me and Jazz, we're on, of the opinion of it might be safe now, but what would be better is to just wait and send the sheep out. Sending those lambs to the slaughter, you know? Like, we're like, we don't need to test if it's safe. We're just going to let the unwashed masses go out there. And unwashed, I mean their hands, of course. Their unwashed hand, the, the mass, un, unwashed hand, the masses with the unwashed hands, the clean masses with the unwashed hands, we're sending them out, say no standing spears. And, and what we're doing is I'm waiting for that second wave news headline positive or negative and that's when i'll start leaving the house uh and i understand i have the luxury to do that because my job is yelling at you and and telling you what to do that's my job <laughs> thank the lord right uh so i have the luxury to do that and i'm thinking of i'm my my thoughts are with you my thoughts and prayers are with you my i, I i'm i'm doing nothing for the people who have real jobs here that's what i'm saying right my thoughts and prayers are with you yeah well tell that to the cunt coughing his lungs up in the icu my thoughts and prayers are with you my lungs don't work do something else make a treatment get me some chloronoptoquine or whatever the fuck that orange cunt's taking right uh, I'm waiting for that headline, bro. Like the, the headline that either says uh, social distancing, relaxing has caused a million deaths or uh, second wave not happening, according to experts. That's what I'm waiting for. So if, it, if it's not happening, I'm going to start leaving the house. I'll still social distance, but I'll start doing things. I haven't left the house for ages. Uh, but but I'm waiting for other people to test that. You know what I mean? It's what it's like what I went back to. You know, if if you want back in the day, if you wanted breast implants, that's cool. But you don't get it when they first invent it. You wait, right? I was listening to a really interesting podcast from like a trans person talking about the getting a pussy made. You, they're good now. They're like they just got good now. But those fucking early pussies, oh. I mean, those early pussies look worse than an actual pussy. <laughs> and I've seen some shockers. Right now, I think, from what I've heard, I think the doctors are doing better than God. Like, like really? Like, you've, like there's not many beautiful pussies, you know? I've seen a lot of good ones, but I've seen... Okay. I haven't seen a lot of ugly pussies, but I have seen a lot of pussies. You know what I mean? Like just, oh yeah, that's a pussy, right? I would say, and this, this might be a controversial opinion. I might get cancelled again for this. I think that there are a lot more ugly pussies than ugly dicks, right? Now... As a, a, a pornography consumer, and I used to be a much more frequent, I don't really look at it anymore, actually. I've kind of gone off it. But as a teenager, as we all did, right, I was a frequent consumer of the hub. So really, I've probably seen an equal amount of pussies to dicks. Depending on what you're into, you might have seen way more dicks than pussies. If you're in that, if you're into that eight on one shit, your ratio would be off the charts. You'd be a dick expert. You might be a little bit fuzzy on the pussies. Those pussies, you might be a little bit fuzzy on fuzzy pussies. <laughs> that that one amused me, guys. I don't know about you, but that one tickled me. Um, so what I'm saying is, right? Uh, 
I think I've seen a lot of dicks. Not in real life, but online, I've seen a lot of dicks. And i got to say, you know, I've seen a lot more ugly pussies than I have ugly dicks. Now, not many pussies are ugly, um, and not many dicks are ugly either. I'm just saying I've seen a lot more ugly pussies than ugly dicks. Although one time I did see a horrific penis. Like a fucking, like a real, a real shocker. You know, like to the point where it's like, why didn't you just get a guy who uh, who had just left the Burns ward? It'd be better than that. Like a guy that was cooking and then he dropped the pot of boiling water like down his waist. That cock, whatever that fucking shriveled up pastrami looking penis would look better than this. It was like... Uh, the, and I don't know how the fuck he managed to be a porn star because if I was the casting director, I would have got that shit the fuck out of there. You know, at least inspect the... I know there's not a lot of uh, quality or control over there at Pornhub. I mean, l let's be real. They are uh, putting out a lot of child pornography and non-consensual uh, video recently and not taking it down despite victims uh, asking them to, right? There's a lot of that shit going on. So there's not much quality control. There's not much consent checking, but at least check the cocks. You know what I mean? Like if you can't check whether or not the person in the film would like to be on your website, at least check to see if the guy in the film has a weird cock. That's all I'm asking for because I've seen too many fucking weird cocks, Right? I would say that, you know, the reason why... You know what? Maybe in real life, there are just as many ugly pussies as there are ugly cocks. The reason you see more ugly pussies is just because there are less women in porn, right? Supply and demand. So that's probably why I've seen less ugly cocks, because there are just more cocks to choose from. So you can have a bit of quality control, you know? I mean, that's where you're going to find those mandingos, you know, those fucking 12-inch, those plumbing dicks. But the places, the pla those cocks that'll do a bit of that won't just fuck, they'll also renovate. You know, knock out the back wall, create an open plan pussy. <laughs> that's where you get those because you have more choice, you know? So some, so that's what I'm saying. Maybe there, there isn't as many ugly pussies. There's just more ugly pussies in Pornhub because there's less pussies to choose from. Whereas dicks, you know, there's more to choose from. I'm sure there are so many more porn, more men wanting to get into porn than women. Even though there's the wage gap, you know, inequality. Hashtag me too. Okay? But what I'm saying is that's why I'm so appalled by this cock that I saw in a porn. Because there is so many other decks you could have chosen you know why did you choose this one let me tell you about it this is a weird i was going to talk about black lives matter this this episode and now i'm talking about an, an ugly penis i saw eight years ago and never forgot actually it would have been way more than eight years ago how old am i i'm 26 would have been like 15 so like 11 years ago i saw this cock and it's in there i reckon i know this cock more than my own and that says a lot I look at mine every day, you know? But this one shocked me. This, I, I, I'm, okay, I was going to say, I won't get too graphic. Guys, it's Spearhead Sundays, okay? You know what you're in for. I'm getting graphic. It was this dick, and it was a, it was a, the, I think what was, the, what was shocking about it was that every other aspect of it was a regular cock, you know? Like, I would have preferred a completely fucked cock than dead. You know when you see, you know what it was like? It was like when, uh, if you're walking down the street and the, the street tiling, the pavement has a regular pattern that's supposed to like go up, down, up, down, up, down. But when they laid it, someone fucked up and it goes up, down, up, down, up, up. And you see the up, up and you go, that fucking shits me. Everything else about this is perfect, but that is fucking awful. That one mistake ruins the rest of this. That That's what God did to this guy's cock. He made a pretty good dick and then he just absolutely fucked it up and it ruined everything else. I would rather see a, like a stump, like a mangled cock, like some guy put it in a blender for a previous video and then it came out and then they managed to save it in the in the ICU. You know, that's that's what I would rather have seen because at least that's inspirational, you know? Like, oh, this guy put his cock into a fucking Nutribullet, but at least, you know, he can still do his job. That's inspiring. If I put my dick into a Nutribullet and I still fucked your girlfriend, you would have to shake my hand. Really? Like, like bro... 
Like, you would, at first you would be angry. Like, I can't believe you fucked my girlfriend. My girlfriend's cheated on me. I, I trusted her. Lewis Spears fucked my girlfriend. But if I, if you confronted me and said, why, why the fuck did you have sex with my girlfriend? And then I just looked at you and I said, well, here's the reason why. And I slowly undid my fly and I, and I like, un unveiled, like, my, my, my dick that had been mangled by a Nutribullet. You would, you would look at me and you'd be like, not only do I forgive you, I commend you, my brother. And we would, we would hug. You might even kiss me on the forehead that you, you'd cry looking at that, that mangled cock that, that was just saved. You, you know what you would do? You would go and you would, you, would, you would have sex, passionate sex with the surgeon that saved my penis. And then, and then you would, and then you would say, you know what? You can have it. <laughs> That's what would happen, right? Because it would be inspirational. I reckon if you put your dick into a Nutribullet, it, it, you know what it would look like? I don't think it would get blended. I think it would end up looking like, you know, when, uh, when you were in like primary school and you used to, you used to fold a bit of paper a million times and then you cut those human shapes out and you'd get a human chain. You, it'd be like that with a penis. You just get a chain. It, no, no bit would detach. You would just get a chain of cocks. And then you could fold it back together and it would be like one, one dick. And then you could pull it out and it'd be many. That's the type of cock you'd get from a Nutribullet. And, and, you would, and the reason you'd be so impressed is because you can't really um, uh, put your dick in a Nutribullet without properly closing the lid and then pushing down. So that's like really impressive doing that. Anyway, I think I've gotten sidetracked here thinking about what would happen if you put your dick in a neutral bullet. This podcast is meant to meant is is fucked. You know I emailed a you know I've been trying to look for a sponsor for this podcast. And and then and then when you email them and tell them a bit about yourself, this you know what I did? This actually happened to me. Sent an email to this Australian company. I won't say the name obviously. And I was like, hey, I saw your, your Australian company. You, you, know, you, you uh, sponsor other small creators and small podcasts. Uh, here's a little bit about me. Here's a bit about Spearhead Sundays. I, I think uh, my guys would love your product. And uh, he gave me a call. I was like, dude, I checked out your bloody YouTube video, uh, your YouTube channel. Loved it. Loved the Marxism video. It was really good. Uh, I think I'd be super interested in your podcast. Can you send me an episode? And I was like, yeah, no worries. Sent him an episode. He probably listened to me talking about uh, mangled pussies and paper and dick chains. And he was like, "Oh, I don't think this is for me." <laughs> you understand that 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 I have to show this to a brand and then go, "This is worth money." They they probably listen to this shit going, "Whoever the fuck enjoys this, I don't think I want them as a customer because they're fucked in the brain." And you know what? Can't really blame him, can you? You can't. Because here you are, sat down, listening to an Australian comedian des describe what would happen to his dick if he put it in a neutral bullet and then fucking your girlfriend and then you crying and kissing him because you're so impressed. It's, it's not really going to sell very many fucking shavers, is it? Is it? Like, you listen to that and you don't think this guy would be a good shaver salesman. I listen to it and I go, this cunt's insane and I am this guy. What was I saying? Right, the weirdest cock I ever saw in porn. So, <laughs> this sucks. I, uh, I was 15 and I watched it, just a regular porn. Uh, and then, uh, you know, he whips it out and, and it was like a normal size. It was, uh, you know, a normal size porn dick, so like, a, like above average size. Totally fine looking, except, and I didn't notice this until a few minutes in. Oh, I, and, the, and the reason I noticed it is graphic as fuck. So if you're listening to this with your mum, hey mum, be a better parent because you shouldn't be listening to this with your child, okay? This, this isn't how you bond. One time someone sent me a, a, a video of them listening to my podcast in the car with their grandmother on a road trip. And I was like, you know what? Something's wrong here. And I, and I don't think it's me. It's definitely them. There's something going on there. 
I don't approve. Turn it off. Okay? It's not how you bond. I don't think this is the this. If this is an integral part of the relationship with your grandmother, I don't know how to help you. Something's wrong with one of you, or both, or me, all of us. You know what? Hey. That's great. Show this to your grandma. I'll see her at a show, right? Now, let me describe this cock. It w so it looked fine from the top point. Of it was a point of view, right? Looked totally fine. Normal dick, yeah? Obviously not focused on it. You're, you're, you're looking at something else, okay? But it starts happening, and, and then I just see on the dick this fucking thing. This growth. It shouldn't be there. And and it, it must have been underneath the dick. But every time it went in, this fucking growth that was sticking out, this like skin tag. You know that shit that old people get on their face or their neck? And it's like, well, that shouldn't be there. Like something, something malignant. He had something there. And every time it would go in, it would not. So his dick would go in, but the the thing would be like, "Nah, I'm not going in there. I, I'm gonna." I, it would like twist around and sit on top, and and I got so horrified that I just had to like what look at it and figure out what it was. And and I went from like having a great time to just feeling like I was in science class dissecting something, looking at this fucking thing move around, and being like, "Hey, you know what it was like? It was like um." Uh, you know that, uh, <laughs> you know that at the arcade, how you have that, that game that has all of the, the targets, the circles and the holes and, it, and the circles get progressively smaller and the smaller the, the circle and you have the balls that you roll up the ramp. I don't know what, that, what that's called, but it's at every arcade. You know what I'm talking about? Where you would like roll it in and you'd have seven balls and you try and roll it into the small hole. I felt like I was watching someone play that, but there was only one tiny hole, hole and that like fucking skin tag on, on, the, in the, on the underside middle of his dick was the ball and I was just trying to see if it would ever go in. And it just refused to. Why am I talking? Why am I telling anyone this? This previously just lived in my brain. Now it's in yours. What am I doing? So yeah, anyway, that's the weirdest dick I ever saw. It just had this fucking thing. I wonder what he's doing now. I would have named it. You know? This is my dick and that's Jim. He doesn't like going in, but he'll hang out. He's, he's like, I'm good. He's like that guy that doesn't want to get in the pool because he's fat. He wears a t-shirt and just dips, just dips his feet in, you know, Jim. He just sits here. He's like, hey, come in, Jim. The water's nice. He's like, oh, I'm good. I'm chilling. I don't want you to see my man tits. He's like that guy. That's, that's what I like to think of. He's like that malignant growth. He's like, I don't want to go in the pussy. Uh, you're going to see my man tits. Anyway, guys, what am, what am I doing with my life? And what are you doing with yours, man? All right, should I talk about this fucking horrible shit? How long are we going here for? Uh, I can't even fucking tell. Uh, I don't know. My camera doesn't tell me. Oh, maybe about fucking 20 something. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, uh, this, this fucking police brutality shit, Black Lives Matter, the anti-police protests, it's all fucking terrible, isn't it? Um, look, it's, it's, it's such a complex issue and I'm going to say, I don't know the fucking answer. But it's, it's a shame. You know what it makes me grateful for? It makes me grateful for our police. And, and they're not perfect. That's not, I'm not saying that they're perfect. But thank fuck they're not that bad. Like when, when Australia... And I, I thought that all of these people saying that the American police aren't bad, they don't have a fuck system. I think when you have a look at almost the entire world protested against police and, and, and used... The, the, the energy that came out of America, they used that and they, and they channeled it into the issues that they have with their police at home. So for Australia, I don't know about any other countries, but for Australia, it was like uh, Aboriginal incarceration rates and deaths in custody is, is like our big uh, issue. So we channeled that into our demonstrations and our protests against police and 
for the most part, they were incredibly peaceful on both sides and the police let us do the protests. I mean, there was a few politicians that tried to outlaw it, but that was eventually overturned and it was, for the most part, generally peaceful. You didn't see any... The cops didn't dress up in riot gear. Uh, the cops weren't fucking tear gassing, throwing shit. Uh, and I know there's stuff on both sides, but there has been a lot of fuck shit from just the cops and just the other side as well. And it made me it made me go, you know what? That's almost the biggest mark against the cops in the US of like, well, if everyone else can do the same thing that they do in America, bad protesters included, like I know in the UK, there's been a lot of violence. But the, the, the level of response from the police in every other country has been so much more responsible and thought out and restrained and planned than the Americans' ones. Uh, it makes you kind of think, fuck, I think they have a point. Um, it's just a shame. I think, I think what this is, it's the first time in history where everyone, no matter what you believe in, is on the same page with that instance of police brutality of, oh yeah, if you watch it, it is undeniably murder. Haven't seen a single take that goes, oh well, from this angle, or, or if he wasn't doing that, it's like uh, the only thing that's kind of getting debated is uh, him putting his, his knee on the neck. Uh, to the point where he passes out. And then I think that's fucked and the, and the police agree you should never put it on the neck, you should put it on the back. Uh, but some people are saying, oh, that happens. But, but, the, but the, ultimately that argument dies when uh, George Floyd did, basically. Because the, the cop did it and let's say he didn't realise he was doing it or whatever, that argument dies when George Floyd does because... George Floyd passes out and then the, do the guy does not remove his knee for minutes. And that's just how you kill someone. Uh, and everyone was saying, hey, move the knee, let him breathe, blah, blah, blah. And he's passed out noticeably. So not resisting at all, not even capable of resisting because you've blocked the flow of oxygen. Anyway, it's too fucking sad. I, I don't like thinking about it and talking about it. Um, <clears throat> so it's one of the first instances that I've seen that where everyone, right, left, uh, citizen, police officers included, all think that what Derek did and the other cops was objectively murder. Um, and so it's, so it's good to see all four of those cunts charged with murder because I think that's fucking despicable what they did and it's a great thing that they were charged with murder. Now, what is not a great thing is that initially they were not charged. And here's where I'm going to get into the violence and the protests. So I think, right, looting, obviously fucking bad. Looting and uh, smashing up businesses is horrific and should never happen. But rioting, all for it. And let me explain what I mean by rioting. What I mean by rioting is directed damage uh, to the people that have wronged the mob. Uh, and, and the reason that has happened is because there's been peaceful protests for literally years every time this shit has happened and seemingly nothing has been done to address it in a significant way because it keeps happening. And I think this this rioting and shit is is it's not only because of George Floyd. It, I feel I feel like this George Floyd shit is the straw that broke the camel's back. And if the protesting and shit wasn't shut down, for example, Colin Kaepernick doing the taking the knee during the anthem, uh, that got shut down. He got booted out of the NFL. He could have been a really positive figurehead for peaceful, legitimate protest about this shit or about any kind of cause. But because he was shut down and so many others were shut down and so many other peaceful protests happened with nothing happening, and even the peaceful demonstrations that happened after George Floyd was killed, nothing happened. And what happens 
when peaceful protests are ignored, riots happen. That's just how that shit works. And as horrible as, as the rioting can be, positive things do happen from it. A lot of the time. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time. I mean, the French Revolution was horrific, but at the end of it, France was better. That's not to say that looting is is good, f fucking going out and beating the shit out of people. Any type of any type of like looting or violence against people, I think is fucked. However, smashing up signs and burning down the police station, I saw that and I was like, well, that's going to send a fucking message and something's going to be done. And and shit is changing. But that being said, I hope that cop shop didn't have any fucking rape kits in there because if, if so, there's going to be a lot of poor women out there that aren't going to be get, getting justice because a lot of evidence would be destroyed. So that's the fucking downside of it. But there's, you know, downsides to everything. I think the, the question to ask is like, would those cops have been charged if this shit didn't happen? I don't think so. Very, very rarely do charges get upgraded or, or people get arrested that initially were not arrested without this type of shit. And, and that, to me, those people getting arrested and, and Derek's charge getting upgraded from third degree to second degree, to me, that is what should have happened from the start and that's justice. So would that justice have happened if this shit did not happen? And it, it's like... I don't view this as a left or right issue. I view this as if, you know, you're a right-wing person, you believe in uh, the government not having the ability, not having too much power. Uh, and to me, the police being able to, like, objectively execute a guy and walk away with, like, a slap on the wrist, that is the government killing a citizen and getting away with it because it has too much power. So what should be done is adjusting that power. And if that shit is not done, you rise up against the tyrannical government. I mean, that is literally how America was founded, right? Britain was some tyrannical government. The people rose up, and I'm sure a lot of innocent cunts got hurt during that time. I'm sure a lot of businesses were fucking destroyed. But at the end of the day, as terrible as that shit was, America became the land of opportunity and the most powerful country in the world. And that is obviously an incredibly simplified, super shortened version of it. But that's what fucking happened. And, and again, this is just my opinion. I'm not saying that I'm completely correct. And with this type of stuff, it's always evolving and no one has the answer and no one has the full picture, you know, because that was, that was the thing that when I first saw that video, I was like, I think this might be the first one where everyone has the full picture. That shit's fucked. Because even with all of the other ones, <clears throat> it, it was hard to unequivocally call them murder because a lot of them were obscured angles a lot of them information came out later of like oh well they actually had this in their pocket or this or that or whatever the fuck where even some that that maybe so were objectively murder the video footage that the public saw didn't conclusively prove that because maybe they were filming it from the wrong angle so it was impossible to tell so something that could well have been objectively murder wasn't captured properly so it, it's still up for debate I, th I truly think this one was the first one that, uh, that I've seen anyway, I've seen a lot. I obviously haven't seen all of them. The first one that I've seen where every single person was like, yeah, that shit was fucking murder. So I think that th those riots happening in, uh, in, in where it happened and those cop shops being fucking burnt down, that was the result of the cops not getting charged, the people not being listened to, uh, and, 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 and also the years and years and years of protests and, and demonstrations like this to stop this shit from happening in future, I felt like it was the rage of the people feeling like all of their peaceful efforts were for nothing. Because if those peaceful things worked, this shit never would have happened. And of course, there's going to be one-offs and, uh, and bad apples and that kind of shit. But also 
Cops can't have bad apples. Doctors, you can't have a bad apple. Pilots, you can't have a bad apple. There are lots and lots of institutions where having one-off bad things shouldn't happen. And also, I don't think that the bad apple thing holds weight in this situation because you look at Derek's, Derek Chauvin's record, the dude had... I might get this number wrong, but 12, I believe, previous, com previous complaints of excessive force. The dude had killed four people. I know it was multiple. I, from memory, I believe it was four people before. And maybe they were legitimate. But if you look at that, maybe they weren't. If you look at all of the excessive force complaints, maybe they weren't. So when you have a dude that seemingly has a track record of this shit where people are complaining about it. If the system was followed, if it truly was one bad apple, George Floyd would be alive today. But it seems that there were many warnings. Even the, the, the woman who owned a nightclub where Derek works security, she herself said that every time, every instance, he would resort with way too much violence. It was a part of who he was. And that was incredibly obvious to her as a nightclub manager. And he just did security. So it's not that crazy to think that maybe this guy slept, slipped under the radar because he was not just a bad apple. Maybe there were a lot of people either turning a blind eye or also doing the same shit. And turning a blind eye is almost worse. So when that shit happens and when lots of people complain about an officer and when a dude kills a guy and three other cops watch it fucking happen and then none of those police get charged, that bad apple argument, at least in Minneapolis, that precinct, at, the, at least there, it doesn't hold up. Uh, and that, and that's, that's when cunts riot because clearly justice cannot be served in that environment if if radical change doesn't happen. I'm just talking about this one instance and, and the, the people that surround it. Um, and that's why I'm of the opinion in that situation, the riots were justified. The looting, absolutely not. The violence against other people, absolutely not. But the fucking throwing of rocks at cop cars and throwing them at fucking police stations and all that kind of shit. It's not good, but it is justi justifiable and un at, at the very minimum understandable why that would happen. I could never condone violence. I could never condone fucking vandalism, but I can, I can absolutely understand it. And if I was part of that community, I might be there. You know, and it's funny people, uh, people who don't listen to the podcast being surprised that that me understanding the riots, like, bro, I used to vandalize for no reason. <laughs> At least they're vandalizing for a reason. I used to do that shit when I was, I used to go out and smash cars for fun, bro. I'm not your role model. I used to go out with my friends and we would smash cars and steal shit from them. I'm not a good person. I never said I was. I was doing that shit for fun, for no reason. So of course I'm behind vandalism for a good cause. I was doing it for fun. Those, those guys out there smashing cop cars for a just cause, they're better than me. <laughs> they're a step up from me. If you like me, you should like them more. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to bring some, I'm trying to bring some humor into it. Uh, it's just such a fucked situation, but that, is, that is my opinion. Now, where it get now, where it gets muddy and where I'm, where I start to, to go against the, the looting and even the rioting is, is when it starts when it starts to look like it's because with any just as there are bad cops there are of course bad protesters but just as a few bad apples do not invalidate the police force 
a few bad protesters do not invalidate the, the protests. And I would say the ratio to bad protesters and bad cops would probably be very similar. So all of those looters, fuck them. All of those people out there going around beating up white people just because they, they're racist, fuck them. All of those guys beating up black people because they think they're all fucking rioters, fuck them. They're using the chaos of this and the, the horrible tragedy and, and they are, they're exploiting it and they are also lessening the chance of all of this chaos ending up with a good outcome. So fuck them unequivocally fuck them they're ruining any kind of good that could come from this terrible situation and they're ruining the chance of a productive conversation so fuck them also antifa is absolutely a terrorist organization you're a fucking moron if you think that they're not people masking up beating the shit out of journalists and people they don't disagree with for any reason right hey bro dictionary definition of terrorism so but I also do not think every cunt protesting is Antifa. Every time you see a protester doing something fucked, that means they're in Antifa, okay? Let's be, if you want them to be a terrorist organization, they gotta be a little bit organized. You can't just call every cunt in a mask smashing a window Antifa. You're a fucking dickhead uh, if you think like that. So I, I think that I, from my point of view, and look, I'm an Australian, so I, all, all I think every time I see this is thank fuck for our police. And, and of course, we have our issues as well, but thank fuck for ours compared to that looks horrific. I couldn't believe how uh, dangerous and, and equipped and militant all those cops are. It's a real tell that... Because uh, I was initially thinking when they deployed the National Guard, I was thinking shit is going to get fucking crazy. We're going to see some deaths. We're going to see some fucking crazy shit. But as soon as the guard, wherever the guard was, it seemed very fucking peaceful. You do not see, I haven't seen one clip and uh, maybe they do exist, but I have not seen one clip of the National Guard or anyone in an army uniform fucking up a protester or even uh, any kind of chaotic situation. I haven't seen any of that wherever the National Guard is deployed. So it makes you think if the National Guard is doing the police's job better than the cops, there's something going on there. It's, it's, to me, it seems like and, and this might also be the fault of the protesters. I, the fault that I see in the protest is that there, there doesn't seem to be a collective unified. This, this is, so this is why we're angry, very clear. This is what we want, very unclear. And that's really what you need to have a positive solution. So you can have, this is why we're angry. Great, nailed that. This is a list of demands. This is a list of outcomes we would like. Seems very muddy. And, and on the police side of things, they've gone, we understand why you're angry. They've nailed that. They have not gone, we're willing to work towards a solution. It seems like the police's response and Trump's response is just, let's stop these protests by any means. These protests must be stopped. It's not like, well, maybe we should... Obviously, this terrible thing has happened and it keeps happening. Here are, here's our idea for how to fix this. Or here are, here's the leader of our organizations. We're willing to talk to the leader of your organization. None of that shit's happening. In fact, to the point where the, the shit that, that Trump's been saying, and I don't want to get on this orange man bad rant, rant but the shit he's been saying has, has, has really turned me off him. And I've never really been anti-Trump at all. I've always been of the opinion he's better than the fucking system. Whoever's in the, the supposed figurehead of this system, right? Like Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, they're all, part, they're all a fucking cog in this terrible system that he... Uh, uh, with all of his faults is ultimately better than hopefully in, you know in the sense the same sense as the same logic as the riots no, not every aspect of the riot is good but hopefully the chaos of the riots will uh change the system 
even with all of the negatives. Trump was almost like that. Trump, to me, was like burning down a police station, you know? He's going to do a lot of fuck shit. He's going to cause a lot of chaos. He's going to make a lot of people angry. He's going to do a lot of good things, but he's also going to do a, a lot of fuck shit, right? But at the very least, he's going to scare the fuck out of the system enough to inspire positive change, to maybe go, oh, fuck, maybe we should listen to the people and do a good job for the people, because if we don't do that, they're going to go, fuck this whole system. Let's choose the wild card and you don't know who the wild card is Trump for a wild card is fucking great you know Germany had Hitler that was their wild card that was their going we're in debt we're fucked fuck the whole system let's go with this crazy cunt and then you got Hitler that's not good Trump's a great wild card out of all of the wild cards he's a fucking good one you know, in terms of fuck the system, vote for him, great choice. Because you could have got fuck the system, let's go Hitler. You could have you could have got that. It's not impossible. The, the fucking people who supported Hitler, they're just humans. They are us. You know, it's not impossible. That, I mean, that's the whole fucking thing with the never forget shit. You never forget because it could happen again. It's still happening today in other countries. We, and we are those people. So it's within our scope. So for a wild card, he was a fucking lucky good one, right? But uh, he's kind of lost me on his response to the protest uh, purely because of those, man, those, that shit he's been saying has been some scary shit. Like from a freedom point of view, like I saw, I saw one that made me go, all right, I'm off him now. He's going to have to win me back. Of He, he said something along, along the lines of... Uh, we need to stop these protests. And then he put in the tweets, overwhelming force, domination. Now, that's a dude talking about his own citizens. Now, whether or not they disagree with you, that you are in charge of them and your job is to do a great job for the people who don't like you. That's what being a president prime minister is you have to create the best country for the people who don't like you too and to see the leader talk like that in reference to a like talk about overwhelming force about in reference to rioters about a protest that is about overwhelming force i thought was gross and I thought was scary. And I would think any fucking person on the right side, especially, would freak you out. Surely. Surely that makes you go, fuck, maybe this guy isn't the best. And, and I am not even saying with that tweet, he's 100% lost to me. I would just, I'm saying... That was a big black mark against him. Now, the other cunt can't even finish a sentence. So at least this dude knows what he wants to do. This other cunt, this Joe Biden dude, couldn't, can't even fucking get out of bed. He is senile. So he can't do a good job either. But that shit is fucking scary. You have to admit. Um, so to me, I thought that was a, at the, you know, at the worst, fucking scary. Uh, at best, a terrible way to handle the uh, discontent of a giant number of people. Um, and it's just not a leader thing to do. I don't know. I, I, from what I'm seeing, it just looks like, and of course, a lot of there's a lot of rioters and a lot of looters that are doing a lot of shit. But the, uh, the I'm seeing a lot of cops like beating the shit out of peaceful people. Uh, and, a, and also a lot of, like, beating the fuck out of the media, which to me is worse. Because, uh, you know, you can't not let the media in. And you can't beat the fuck out of the media. If that was war, it would be a war crime. The minute you start beating the shit out of media or not letting media in or not letting media film stuff, that's when you stop being the freest country in the world and that's when you start turning into Hong Kong. That is literally some Hong Kong shit. Beating the fuck out of journalists, not letting them see what the government is up to because the cops are the government. Don't think the cops are not the government. They are the government. So when the fucking cops start beating the shit out of journalists, you know, like we saw, it's, head, it's fucking headlines everywhere in Australia. 
Police beating the shit out of Australian journalists. Foreign, foreign media. That's even worse. You know, the Australian government, the Prime Minister is launching an investigation into why the fuck American police are beating the shit out of Australian journalists who are just reporting, not involved. That's scary shit. So I think there is... I, and and I, I don't know what the answer is because I don't, you know, I don't live there and, and, and I ultimately think that we should care. I'm talking about it because obviously the, my job is to make fun and create entertainment out of things that are happening in the world. So I have to talk about this because, you know, ultimately it is my job. But I do think as a, as a private Australian citizen, ultimately you shouldn't really give a fuck. It's not our problem. We have our own shit to deal with and to improve on. Uh, and, and we should be very grateful for our police, even though they do have their issues. I'm not saying they do not. It, it just uh, seems very fucking scary, bro, like uh, at those protests. And it seems like a lot of the cops are treating, this, tr treating the protesters like their enemy. It seems a very much a team thing when really... Like the Black Lives Matter protests in Melbourne. I know there was a little bit of fuck shit in Sydney. Uh, but in Melbourne, it, from what I've seen, I've done a lot of research. I'm sure I must have missed something. But from what I saw, it looked incredibly peaceful. The police let the protesters do whatever they wanted to do. Let them have their free assembly. Let them have their protests. Uh, kept violence to a minimum. Didn't obstruct the protest. They, they, they were there to keep everything safe and everything good and normal and and uh, and productive for the country that's what the police's role should be in a protest and and i think the curfew shit to me i had a, i had a had a bit of a, a talk about uh, a just like a, a debate online which i never do but i was honestly interested in this american's opinion about the curfew to me a curfew seems a curfew because of a protest seems fucking stupid and seems ridiculous because to me a curfew makes the police's job harder and i'm not an expert but to me from all of the thinking and all of the the research that i've done it looks like a curfew uh makes the police's job harder and also makes the police more likely to anger the general public, which is more likely to make protests more violent, which is more, cause more agitation and make the whole problem worse. To me, having an 8 p.m. curfew, especially in a place like New York City, I don't know about other places, I was researching New York, uh, it seems like it turns the police's job from arresting looters and arresting bad actors, as they should be, right, to arresting everyone, right? It turns criminals the definition of a criminal from someone destroying and stealing and being violent it turns that from that into uh everyone anyone on the street and especially in a place like new york the city that l never sleeps i've been there there is no quiet period so that turns the, the cop's job from, I need to stop criminals, I need to stop people from stealing shit, into, I need to arrest every single cunt that I see. Surely that makes it worse. Because if, I'm, if I don't care about the protest, but I'm going home from work, and all of a sudden I catch a, a baton to the legs because I, work, I, I finish at 10 p.m. and I got to feed my kids, all of a sudden I hate cops now. Because I got the shit kicked out of me for trying to feed my family. I was not involved with the protest, but you better believe if that shit happened to me, I'm, a, I'm all in now. Surely that makes the problem much worse, makes the job harder for the police, and provides a really good cover for all of those bad actors, all of those people looting, all of those people burning and stealing and, and, and robbing and, and being violent. That would be the best thing of like, oh, great. Now, instead of worrying about them looking just for me, I'll go and rob the fuck out of a quiet place while all of these cops who are supposed to be looking for me are trying to deal with peaceful protesters in Madison Square Garden or whatever. Not Times Square. You see what I mean? I feel like the curfew makes shit way worse.
I mean, I might be wrong. I'm open to opposite opinions. I'd actually love to know your thoughts. I feel like I'd like to make this an open conversation because all you see online is fucking, oh, cops are fucking evil. We need to abolish the police. Or every single protest is fucking a, a terrorist. Lock them up. They're all in Antifa. It's like we need to fucking get rid of this polarity shit. This shit will never end if there's no productive conversation. It's like, let's burn down some police stations. Great, all for that. And then let's sit down and talk, you know? <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't have the answers, but I do have the problems. And that's what it's all about. It's, I don't know. It just seems... I'd love to know your thoughts. It seems, uh, it seems to me that the police have a lot of... Uh, introspection a lot of it thinking about themselves to do and to me it seems like they are they are it seems like the cops um, are escalating rather than de-escalating and that seems to be something that australian police are great at you have a fucking crazy situation cops come in and they calm it down because violence is the last thing you want arresting someone ultimately is the last thing you want Really, we, we, you obviously want to work to a society where police are not needed. Now, that ob is obviously impossible, but that's what we should work towards, that utopia. You know, shoot for the moon. If you land in the stars, great. You know, if we're shooting for a world where cops aren't needed, hopefully we can land in a place where, uh, you know, we have, you know, as little police as we need because there is little crime because maybe the best way to fight crime isn't by giving the cops more money maybe it's by taking some money some not all that defund the police entirely argument is fucking moronic but maybe the cops don't need that much money i think is the argument that should be put together i think defund the police is a fucking stupid slogan it should it should be something like uh <laughs> audit the police you know what i mean like it should be Rather than giving more money to cops to fight crime, maybe instead of giving them more money to arrest more people, maybe you take that money and you put it into helping homeless people. That was the most shocking thing I saw in New York was how horrific the homeless problem was. I saw that shit and I was like, dude, I don't fucking f feel safe and I feel terrible for these poor people that are stuck out on the street. And, you know, the argument is, oh, well, they just need to do shit. Well, maybe they need a little boost to help them do some shit and even if you even hey let's say they don't deserve the help let's give it to them anyway and then maybe that will get them off the street and they'll stop committing crimes and that'll take some pressure off the police force which will make the police force cheaper which means we'll save some money which means you can put some more money into help and mental health maybe we can check that one off next you know i think that's that that's ultimately where the where where I think from my point of view, it needs to go. Where you just need to, obviously you need police, but maybe you don't need th that many police, or maybe you need that many police, but the police don't need that many weapons and tools and guns and gadgets and gear. Maybe you could take some of that money and put it towards uh, preventing crime before it happens. I was listening to some really interesting, like, uh, fuck, what's the guy's name? Really handsome black actor, Denzel Washington, I think it was him. If that's not him, I'm a racist. <laughs> Denzel Washington, I think his point of view was you need to get, you need to, he was saying that cops aren't arresting, he's talking for the black community, he was saying Cops aren't arresting us when we're seven years old. They're arresting us when we're 15, 16. And he was saying the system did, hasn't failed us. We failed ourselves before the system got involved. The system was too late. Or, or it was too late by the time we got to the system. So he was saying that th these communities that struggle with crime that are that are often uh over representative in crime statistics and in prisons and shit like that he was saying that these communities need to help themselves up and rise up together and and fix the fatherless fatherlessness issue 
uh, and I don't know anything about this. This isn't exact. This isn't my opinion yet. This is just an interesting thing that I learned today, and I'm going to do more research in, and maybe it will bec become my opinion. But he was saying that these communities need to be lifted up by themselves, so that that they never, the system never even reaches them. You know, they never even get into a position where this, they don't even come in contact with that policing system and that jail system because they, they were saved before that as children, as a community, because all of these other fucking issues were solved. So maybe it's a combination of the two is probably what it is, where it's like maybe we need to stop. The answer clearly is not arrest all criminals. The, the answer should be arrest criminals, but also let's try and prevent criminals from being created in the first place because everyone's a product of their environment. That's undeniable. If you're in the Middle East, you hate the gays and, and they're human. That's, that's a product of their environment. No one is born hateful. No one's born a criminal. No one's born a drug dealer. The environment, environment that you are in will mold the type of person you become. That's why... I, I was surrounded by fucking vandalism and shit and my boys breaking shit so that's why I was doing it and I now realize that was terrible and that was wrong but I fucking loved it because that was my environment that's what I was in and I did not know better now I do I did not know then now if I was you know in that community I might be in fucking prison but I was saved by a brilliant community of loving people around me and opportunity to 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 divert that angry, youthful, I want to prove myself uh, alpha energy into comedy. That's literally what happened to me. I went from fuck the system, let's smash shit, I want that adrenaline rush into I can pivot this into comedy. Let's cause controversy, let's cause a ruckus, let's make get a reaction out of people, let's make people laugh, let's do shows, and now I'm here. I could very well be in fucking prison if I didn't have such a good community, a great family, people around me that push me to do better? That's probably the answer. If our police had so much more money and were so much more prevalent, maybe I'd just be locked up and I'd be another fucking number in the system. So maybe I'm fucking incredibly lucky that money was, was, was in Australia was spent on providing me with an opportunity providing me with things like being you know me being able to see somebody when i was young to talk to on the fucking government's dime and and it's and instead of taxing people more to provide those services maybe instead you need to balance the books a little and be like, why are we spending so much money here when we could take a little bit of money from here and put it into these services and then that ironically will prevent crime much more than the police will and it'll obviously take time but hopefully that's i think anyway in my uneducated australian fucking failed high school opinion could be what happens that's at least what i think that's that's what i think should we should move towards and uh that's that's what i think but it's all, it's just very very sad and hopefully something positive will come to it. I, I just, I really do hope that uh, it doesn't just get worse and get shut down, which is what clearly seems to be the fucking big boss wants to happen is just make it go away. Cause, because you know what? That will work, but the next one, if this gets shut down by force instead of by agreement and coming together, the next one is going to be horrific. Because this was the first one, right? All those other viral ones and those protests and all that stuff, there was a little bit of violence, there was a little bit of this, there was a little bit of that. This time they burnt down three police stations. There are cop cars, smashed all of the violence everywhere. If this one isn't solved productively and is instead squashed, the next one is going to be hell. So I hope it's solved productively rather than squashed. And that's where I'm going to end this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Episode 200 will be next week. 
uh, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm glad I've gotten this out. I'm glad we've had to t- sit down and talk about it. And, 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 and I am absolutely open to some of the, some or many of the things that I said being wrong. I'm open to to debate. What I'm not open to is fuck you. So can I feel like we've had enough of that. Even if you vehemently disagree with what I've said, I appreciate you uh, uh, feeling that way. And I and I, I love your passion. Uh, but let's keep it civil if you have to fucking have a go. Uh, okay? Can we have that? Because I feel like we can all agree, no matter what you think about this shit, there's been a little bit too much fucking evil yelling and making an enemy of the other side in this because that gets us nowhere. Okay? So that's where I'm going to end it. I'm really looking forward to episode 200. Uh, jump on Patreon if you want early access to everything that I do. You want to support the mission. Uh, this episode will be up on Thursday for Patreon supporters, so nice and early. Uh, but Sunday for everybody else. And uh, I will see you on the main channel for episode 200. I got a banger. I, let me tell you. I have saved up some horrific miscellaneous bits at the end. Emails. If you want to send an email, podcast at loosebeers.com. Send it through. I'd love to uh, hear it. If you, have a, if you have a question, you need some life advice, you have a fuck story, let me know. I have uh, uh, what is one of the most horrific, hilarious emails uh, that I've been saving. And uh, if you have one, send it through. Now's your chance. Episode 200 is next week. Uh, I'll talk to you in the Discord on Patreon. I'm Lewis Spears, uh, and I hope you have a shit one.